Good evening. All doing well. Great to see you in person. Um, one of the shiurim I recorded this week was on an airplane, uh, which was a chiddush. I've never done that before, but I was blessed to not have someone sitting in front of me. And I tested a few different methods of how to record. And I actually was, I tried to do it tonight in, uh didn't work. <laughs> I had another havamina, but it didn't work. Okay, Baruch Hashem. Uh, buckle up, we're learning a, a, a Tuma Sugya about, we know Rishon, the Tuma Sheni, the Tuma, and all of that, Shlishi and Rabi. Um, and before we start that, we have to clean up one Sugya, and that is going to be one third of the way down, maybe a drop more in Chavtas and Aleph, starting with Amar of Gidal Amar Rab. Now, on the previous Amud, on the top of Kavches Amud Beis, we had learned, and really on the bottom of Kavches Amud Aleph, we had learned this uh, critical principle, the difference between Tuma Vitara, Bershus HaYachid, and Bershus HaRabim. And then seemingly, we have a similar din that's quoted here. Amar of Gidol Amar Rab, Dabr Shiyesh Bo Das Lishol, Ve'en Bo Das Lishol. The fact that we make a distinction, as we did on the top of Kavches, that there's a difference in cases between where we're able to ask somebody what happened versus where we're not able to ask a human versus a kli. So when there's a suffix tuma about a human, then we distinguish between shus rabim and shus yachid. Fine. But when we're talking about a kli, we're just mekel. When it's a suffix, we're always going to be leaning. So it says the Gemara, where is that from? That's mehai kronafka. We're halfway down on chavtes amud aleph. We learn that from the following pasuk. The pasuk reads v'ha basar asher yigav v'chol tamei. The basar that touches everything. What does it say? Lo yochal. You should not uh, eat it. What do we learn from there? Vaday tamei hu de lo yochal. Only when there's a vaday of tuma, that's when you don't eat. But safek tamei v'safek tar. If we're unsure, what do we do? Yochal. Meaning from the first part of the pasuk, it implies safek of tuma is lahakel. But ema sefa, the rest of the pasuk doesn't seem to read the same way. The rest of the pasuk reads v'ha basar kol tahor yochal basar. And here we have the opposite implication. Vaday tahor hu de yochal basar. Safek tamei v'safek tar lo yochal. So the very same Pasuk in the beginning and end of the Pasuk have different implications about what happens in a case of Suffolk. From here, of Gid Lama Rav says, El Alav, that must not be what the Pasuk means. El Alav, Shmamina, it must be that one part of the talk, one part of the Pasuk is talking about Kanshi Yeshbo Das Lishayel, talking about a person, and thus the distinctions within. If you're able to ask a person, then we have a difference between Suffolk Bershus HaYachid and Suffolk Bershus HaRabim. However, Khan in the other part of the Pasuk, Shein Bo Das Lishayel, and therefore, we have seemingly a second source now. We have Amar Rav, Rav Gidil Amar Rav over here. And we learn the same din on the bottom of Kavches Amar Aleph. So the Gemara says, why do we have both of the Mari Makomos? Why did Rav Gidil Amar Rav feel the need to chime in and add a second Mari Makom? And the Gemara says, two-thirds of the way down on Kavches Amar Aleph, Yitzrich to Rav Gidil Amar Rav. We needed this new, this new source, the Rav Gidil Amar Rav. We also needed the drasha from yesterday to teach us what seems to be the same thing. Let's review. We learned that there's a difference between uh, tuma that happens with someone with whom you're able to interact versus an inanimate object. And then if it is with an, a person you're able to interact, then we have a difference between suffix versus yachid and suffix tuma versus harabin. So it says the Gemara, why do we need both? Because di'imi dirav, if from the most recent source, sahavamina bein bershus hayachid u bein bershus harabin. The only distinction between bershus harabin and bershus harabin that happened by Sota, where she was bershus hayachid when she did the iser. But we don't see that by the psukim over here that Rav Gidla Marav brought. And therefore, Israel and Megmar Misota, therefore we needed the case of Sota. And be Misota, if I would have only had yesterday's Marimakom, I might have thought that when we're when we're talking about this case of Suffolk and whether or not we are have a case of uh whether or not we have a case of someone who I'm able to actually ask, Lishael. Maybe that's only true in regards to the case of Sota, where there's two human beings involved, but when there's only one, maybe not. Kamash Malan Tzricha, we therefore need both of them. All right, let's dig into today's new sugya. The Gemara uh, quotes our Mishnah. This Mishnah is found on, on Kavches Amad Aleph, and really this has nothing to do with Sota. This is just a little bit of a plant. If you'll recall from Chavzayin Amad Aleph, we had a number of examples in the beginning of our Perak, Ubo Bayom, Dorash, or Biakiva. That was the day that Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah came, came to power uh, as Nasi over Rabban Gamliel. Rabban Gamliel was very strict about who he let in, and then we had the, the loose the looser uh, leadership under Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah, and a bunch of drushas were made that day. So the first drusha that was made, you're welcome to flip back, you don't need to. The first drusha that was made by Rabbi Akiva was that we have this din um, that when it comes to uh, truma, that truma is such a, a, a sensitive food as it relates to tuma that it can even be tame up to three levels away. So you have I let's say a, a mace touches an object, and that's a, an ava tuma. Then that's a rishon the tuma, shaining the tuma, shlishi the tuma. So here is the basic framework of tuma. Here's how it works: the less halachically sensitive the food, the less tuma it has. The more halachically sensitive the food, 
the more tuma it has. It's very simple. So therefore, chulin, which is the lightest, can have a sheni latuma, only up to there. There's no shlishi, there's no revi, there's only up to sheni. Truma, which is more sensitive than chulin, but less sensitive than kachim, that can have up to three, but not four. And kachim, which is the most sensitive food, would become tame even with a fourth level degree of separation from the initial tuma source. And that's kind of how you have to look at it as concentric rings of tuma. Well, you, well, well, we'll discuss that today. That's not that's not a simple, uh, it's not so simple because we have some drushos del riser. So th within that that case, with it, with An Chavzayin and Mabez, we see the shita of Rav Yochanan ben Zakkai. That Rav Yochanan ben Zakkai was of the opinion that there is Shlishi Lituma by Truma, but it's not based on a Pasuk. So now we're going to talk about that on the bottom of Chav Tesem and Aleph, um, about 10 lines down. We're going to be learning towards most of the way down on Lamed and Aleph, and then we'll be stopping about five, six lines, five lines from the bottom of the page. Let us continue. We have a lot of Gemara to learn, and it's not all easy. So it says the Gemara, if really Rav Yochanan ben Zakkai says there is no Pasuk to indicate that there is a Shlishi the Lituma or Truma, so then Lama Tame. Where, where did you learn it from if there's no Pasuk? So it says the Gemara, Amar of Yehuda, Amar Rav, it should say over here, Mikra min HaTorah ein lo, but midin kal v'chomer yesh lo. You're right that we don't have a Pasuk that indicates the Truma is going to become Tame. It's so sensitive that even a third degree of separation from the Tuma will still generate Tuma and restriction for Kohan and Truma. We don't have it from a Pasuk, but we do have it from a Kal v'chomer. Okay, here we go. What's the Kal v'chomer that Rav Yochanan ben Zakkai is relying upon to teach us that Truma is such a sensitive food that it even has a third level of truma, that is tame uh, as a shlishi. Umat yom, in regards to a tvul yom, this is a person who's done all of his requirements, but he has to wait for the sun to set for him, for him to become totally tar. So he's in a little bit of a unique state, right? He hasn't finished his days, but he's checked all the other boxes. In regards to a tvul yom, shemuter b'chulin, he's allowed to eat chulin. And by him, posel b'chuma, and if he touched a food, the truma would become tame. Then kikar, a piece of bread for truma that's a sheni, sheposel b'chulin, that if it touched chulin, it would become pasal. Eino din shlishi. Of course, there should be a case of shlishi l'truma in that case. And that's our kal v'chomer that Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai wants to teach us that even though we don't have a pasuk to teach us that, um, even though there's no pasuk mm -hmm. to teach us that there's a shlishi l'truma, uh, a tuma by shlishi l'truma, but we have a kal v'chomer. So says the Gemara, you want to learn from tful yom? But Tvul Yom has a Chumrah in it. What's the Chumrah of uh, Tvul Yom? Ikal Nifrach Mala Tvul Yom Shekin Av Hatuma. We can have cases of a Tvul Yom that are rooted in Av Hatuma. That's not necessarily how Truma works. And the bottom Rashi of the page actually indicates what some of these examples are of Av Hatuma. Says the Gemara, says Rashi in the bottom line, Dibra Hamaschal Shekin Av Hatuma, Kigon Tame Meis, Ozab, Omitsora, Shehin Betumas, and Ovos. They're the very tip top level. So maybe we should say that we're not able to learn from Tvul Yom. So Tesi, Mi Tvul Yom, says the Gemara, perhaps we can learn from a different Tvul Yom. Let's learn Mi Tvul Yom Desheretz. Okay, you're right. You're right. A regular Tvul Yom could have become Tame from a Mace, from a Mitzora, from a Zav. You're right. That could be a, that could be an Ava Tuma. But why don't we instead learn about a different kind of Tvul Yom and a more narrow a narrow scope of a tvul yom, a tvul yom of a sheretz, not just stam a tvul yom, but a tvul yom of a sheretz. We're giving the parameters, so there's no avatuma. Says the Gemara still, mal tvul yom de sheretz shekain b'mino avatuma. It's still not a great place to make your kal v'chomer from Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, because even though you're talking about a tvul yom de sheretz, but still the tvul yom in general has the capacity to become tame on an avatuma level. So then the Gemara says, well, if that's true, then kli cheres yochiach. Then we can speak about a case of klicheres, and klicheres might be a, a reasonable mari makom to learn from because there is no avatuma there. So says the Gemara, you want to say klicheres yochiach, but mala klicheres shekain metame me aviro. We have a problem because klicheres has a huge chiddush. The 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 um, chiddush of a klicheres is that let's say I have a large earthenware jug and it has a very large opening, and I take tuma and I hang it into the airspace. It doesn't touch anything. I just hang it into the airspace. We know from the psukim and chumash that that's tuma. You can't make a Kal B'chomer from Kli Cheres to learn this special din that there's a, a Tuma by Truma, even to the third level. You can't learn that from a Kli Cheres because Kli Cheres has a Chiddush too. So we tried from Tuul Yom, but that has a problem that it has the capacity for Ava Tuma. That was its Chumr. We tried from the world of Kli Cheres, and that doesn't work either because that has a Chiddush that is Mitame Be'aviro. It says the Gemara, maybe we should go back and forth, Tvul Yom Yochiach. And then the Gemara presents this templating of an argument. It is a cyclical reasoning, but to our benefit. Usually when we say that we're having a cyclical argument with someone, 
I keep saying the same thing. We just keep going back and forth. But here, it's not to create a problem. Here, it's to solve a problem. And the Gemara says, V'chozer hadin, lo re'izeh, ki re'izeh, you're right, that this one is not like that one. full yom is not the same as uh, klicheres. And, and lo re'izeh, ki re'izeh. But there is a tzara shavah shavahen, shemutarn b'chulun u'posun u'posun b'chuma. And this is his raya that he says that if we couple together these two areas of Tvul Yom and Klicheres, then Rav Yochanan ben Zakkai Taka has a very good source. Let, let's remember our problem. Rav Yochanan ben Zakkai said there is no pasuk for Klishli, for Klishli, there is no pasuk for uh, Tuma for Tuma in regards to the third degree of separation from the Tuma from the Tuma. And he says, don't worry, I have a Kalva Chomer. And the Kalva Chomer is coupled between the world of Tuvul Yom and the world of Klicheres. Says the Gemara, Vidor Acher, a later generation parach, they asked a question against Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai and said, that's not right, because Ma'ale HaTzad HaShobesh Ben Shekein Yesh Bohen Tzad Chomer. Yeah, but the problems with each side are very bad problems. The problem with Tvul Yom is very bad. You can't learn about Truma from a case that could be an Avatuma case. And you can't learn about Truma from Klicheres, which has a Chiddush of that it's Metame Be'aviro. So there were people who didn't like Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai's response. And what would he have said to that? But Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, Tzad Chomer Lo Parich. He's not worried about that. That is the nature of this limud. When we have this templated answer of we look at the common denominator and we ignore the, the chidushim of that. That is the limud. That is a limud. So that we have to remember that if we were to take this out of this context, we would be asking a fundamental question. How does this template work? Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai wasn't concerned. And therefore, the question that we started with is answered. We were initially concerned. Where does Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai learn the din? that uh, truma is so sensitive that it's even going to be tummy up to a third degree of separation. And we learn from a kalvachomer of a paired kalvachomer of klicheres and tvul yom. And a quarter of the way down on Chavtes Medbez, the Gemara, uh, all connected, but really not the same exact suya, Tanya, Amar Rabbi Yossi, let's remember that Rabbi Yossi is the author of this b'risa, because we're going to come back and ask a question on him, and the question will lead to the top of Lama Amar Aleph. Amar Rabbi Yossi, minayin l'revi'i b'kodesh she'pasu. Remember what we said. The more halachically sensitive the food, the more it's susceptible to tuma. So the lowest level is chulin, and then truma is even more sensitive, and then the highest level is kachim. So how far out does kachim go? Even four steps away from the initial tuma. How do we know that that's true? The Gemara says, Vidinhu, we have a Kalva Chomer. Ma Mechusar Kipurim. Just like if we have someone who's Mechusar Kipurim, this is a Zav, Zava, Yoledas, and Mitzorah that they have yet to bring their Korbanos. And by them, Shemotr Bitruma, they're allowed to eat Truma, but they're Apostle Bekodesh. Bekodesh. So Shlishi, a third degree of Tuma, Sheposel Bitruma, which is not Motr Bitruma, but it's Posel Bitruma, Eno Din Shiyase Revi Bekodesh. So this is Rabbi Yossi's argument. We learn from the world of Mechus Kippurim. He makes a Kalva Chomer, that just like a Mechus Kippurim is mut, uh, if, uh, I should say, if a Mechus Kippurim is Mutter Betruma, and he can passel a Shlishi, then if there's a Shlishi, that for sure that's not Mutter Betruma, so then certainly that can passel a Revi. So that's what the Gemara says. That's our Mari Makam from Rabbi Yossi. And the Gemara continues just about halfway down on Chavtes and tries to analyze two different things. And this was what Gerald was hinting to. We do have a source that the third distinction, the third level of Tuma for Kodesh is Deoraisa. How do we know that when it comes to a Shlishi, the Tuma for Kodesh, how do we know that that's a Din Deoraisa? Look at the Pasuk, the, the Basar, Asher Yiga Bechol Tameh, which touched something that was Tameh. So look at the Drasha, Milo Askinu Dunaga Besheni Vamar Achman Alo So we see from the shot in the Pasuk, it has to be that we were already by Tumas Sheni, and the Gemara says you can't eat it, which means that if you touch the Sheni, what is that? That's a Shlishi. So we have Pshat in, in, in Chumash. That's a basic Pasuk in Chumash that indicates that we have too much Lishi by a Kohen. And Revi'i Mikal V'chomer Kedah Amran. And the Gemara says that even too much Revi'i by Kodesh is a Din De Oraisa. And it's based on a Kal V'chomer, the one that we just saw from Mechusar Kippurim. Now let's remember that Rabbi Yossi was, uh, was a Tana. And Rav Yochanan is an early Amora. Rav Yochanan and Rav overlapped. Rav was the earliest of the Amoraim. And Rav Yochanan and Rav did overlap a little bit. I think Rav was a little bit older. And the Gemara says, Amor Rav Yochanan, Ta'am biribi, eni yodea, eni yodea mahu. 
So this is a respectful way to say, I really don't see what's going on here. Biribi, uh, the Rishonim here, right? The Biribi is a, uh, it's a phrase of, of great, uh, the Rashi says he was the God of the door. Biosi was the God of the door. So Rabbi Yochanan's like, who am I to, I'm just saying, I'm, I just don't understand. Somebody please explain to me. So this is in deference. It's not meant to be in disrespect. So he says, I, I don't understand. The answer, namely the rejection of Rav Yossi's Kal V'chomer, that we have a Revi'i Betuma by Truma, built into that Kal V'chomer is its own problem. Because, says the Gemara, Ochel haba mach mas yom. If you have a food, in this case, haba mach mas yom means that it became tummy from a tvul yom, yochiach. That'll be our proof. She pasal betruma ve'eno ose revi bekodesh. We have a case scenario where food became tummy from a tvul yom. That's pasal for truma. That ruins truma, but it doesn't create a revi. And that goes exactly against the Mechusar Kippurim argument that Rabbi Yossi wanted to give. And how does Rabbi Yochanan know that he's right? Ditanya. This Brysa quotes a machlokas in the Tanaim on this topic. And uh, he explains the Brysa as follows. I should say the Brysa reads as follows. Ditanya, two thirds of the way down, Chav Testament Bays, Ditanya. Abashol Omer. Abashol says, Tful Yom Tchila Lekodesh. When we are talking about a Tful Yom and it's going to become, uh, and it's going to be touching Kodesh. So it's Lekodesh Latame Shnaim, the Lifsol Echad. We're talking about a case scenario where it's um, where it's going to be it's going to be metame shnaim and lifsol echad. This is what it means. The word tame means that not only is it tame, but it can be metame others. The word puzzle means that it is usher to eat, but cannot be metame others. So what are we saying? We have the rishon. That was the first case. We have two cases of of tame. That's sheni and shlishi, and they're both categories of tuma. And the last one becomes Asr from the Shlishi, that's Revi. That's the Shita of, um, who was that? That's Abashol. Rav Meir Omer, no. Metame Echad, Uposel Echad. He says in such a case as described in the beginning of the Mishnah, we're only talking about up to a Shlishi of Tuma. The Rishon is the Tuma itself. The Sheni is Metame Echad. And Uposel Echad is the Shlishi Latuma. Bechachamim Omrim, Keshem Sheposel Ochle Truma, Umashke Truma, he seems to say, very uniquely, that there's no difference in Tuma between a Shlishi, between Truma and Kodesh. So if between the, the, the Truma and the Kodesh, there's no difference, that's a big problem because we just tried to say that we have a Kalvachomer, that there's a Revi. How could you have a Kalvachomer, that there's a Revi? If the Chachamim hold that Truma and Kodesh have the same limit, which is maximum three. So says the Gemara, that's a very odd response, Rav Yochanan. Who says he holds like the Chachamim? If he holds like the Chachamim, Rav Yochanan, you're 100% right. But what was Rav, what was Rav Yossi trying to say? That there's four levels. levels. That was Abba Shol. Abba Shol said there's four levels of, of, of Tuma. And the Chachamim said there's only three. So Maskif la Rav Papa. Mimai de Rav Yossi kirabanan svirulei. How do you know that Rav Yossi, who just pitched the idea based on Mechusar Kippurim, that there are four levels of Tuma by Kodesh, and the Chachamim don't agree. Perhaps he doesn't agree with the Chachamim. Maybe he agrees like Abishol. <laughs> if Rav Yossi and Abishol are the same, then there's nothing wrong at all. What is Rav Yochanan even asking in the first place? That's the most Balabatish response that we could possibly give, is that he doesn't hold like the Chachamim. He holds like Abishol. That says the Gemara, Dilma Abishol Svirale. And what does Abishal hold? To Amar, echad. That once there's a Risha on the Tuma, we then hold that it's Latameshnaim, it becomes a Shani and a Shlishi, and the Shlishi generates Vilif Sol Echad, that the fourth case scenario. So says the Gemara, that's a Kasha and Rav Yochanan. Rav Yochanan wanted to say that the Brisa, the quotes the sheet of the Chachamim, conflicts with Rav Yossi. And the Gemara says, that makes no sense. Let's see why. Isal Kadaita Ke'abashal. If you wanted to say that really Rabbi Yossi is like Abba Shaul and there's no stira, so that would not be the case. If you want to say he's Kaaba Shaul Svirle, then lay say le revi ve kodesh me ochel shaba machmas tful yom. Then we should have learned not uh, like the way we did from the world of Mechusar Kippurim, but instead we should have made our Kalvachomer from a tful yom. A tful yom is closer to the reservation than mechusar kipurim. Mechusar kipurim is missing a korban. They still have much more work to do. But when you're just a tful yom, 
So that already is closer to home and would have been a better Kalvachomer to make. So it says the Gemara, had it been that Rabbi Yossi held like Abba Shaul, then he would have used a different Kalvachomer. What would the Kalvachomer have been? Uma ochel abba machmas yom. That when we are dealing with a tful yom, a food that became tummy from a tful yom, the tful yom gufei motor bechulin, and the tful yom himself is allowed to eat chulin, amris, we would then say oser revi bekodesh, then the fourth would become kodesh, ochel shlishi abba machma sheni, the sheni gufei oser bechulin, eno din she oser revi bekodesh. Well, what basically the Gemara is saying is that we have a beautiful kalva chomer from a better place, which is tful yom. So had it been that Rabbi Yossi held like Abba Shaul, we would have used a different Kal v'chomer. We would have used a Kal v'chomer from Tvul Yom instead of from Mechus Kipurim. But because we didn't do that, says Rabbi Yochanan, it must therefore be that Rabbi Yossi is really in the camp of the Chachamim. And therefore, we have a very good question because Rabbi Yossi said that there's four levels of Tuma by Kodesh and the Chachamim say only three. And if you want to say, no, the reason why he used the Chusar Kippurim is because Mishum Dika we have a Kasha from the world of Tvul Yom, Mala Tvul Yom, Shekin Av Hatuma. That's not a good argument, says the Gemara. You might have thought that maybe the reason why Rabbi Yossi went to the world of Mechusar Kippurim for his Kalva Chomer was because there was a problem with the Kalva Chomer of Tvul Yom. What's the problem of Tvul Yom? That there's a Chiddush in Tvul Yom, that there's, that person has the capacity for Av Hatuma. And as we discussed earlier in tonight's shir, that is not an ideal place to learn from. So much so that Rav Yochanan ben Zakkai had to uh, do the lower Izek here Izek. He had to say the only way to learn from Tzvul Yom is if we have coupled with it Klicheres. So says the Gemara, perhaps maybe Rav Yossi was concerned about the same thing. Says the Gemara, that can't be. Because ha'isni We would have had the same exact question about Mechus Kippurim. Who are the cases of Mechus Kippurim? Zav, Zava, Tzor, Yoledes. These are people who are also Avosatuma. So therefore, says the Gemara, that Rav Yochanan's question stands. It's an excellent question on Rav Yossi, and no one has an answer in the Gemara. The Rishonim deal with it, but in the Gemara itself, this is an oddity. We don't see this very often, where an Amora poses a bomb kasha, and the Tana, who's no longer alive, zip-lipped, no one knows how to respond. It's very rare. It's very rare. I don't, I mean, I'm sure we might have seen it. I don't know. Any, any recollections? Where an Amora asks a kasha on a Tana, and the Gemara is like, I don't know. That's what happened in our Gemara today. That Rabbi Yossi wanted to say that it's definitely four levels of Tuma because uh, because of the way he learns the Mechus Kippurim Kal V'chomer. Rabbi Yochanan says not so fast, and it turns out Rabbi Yochanan's right. It's very rare. Very rare. Okay, a little bit more for tonight. Amar Avasi, Amar Rav, the Amri La Amar Rabba Ben Isi Amar Rav. Either way, coming from the base Medrash of Rav. The following five Tanoim hold the same thing. Rav Meir, Rabbi Yosi, Rabbi Yoshu, Rabbi Elazar, Rabbi Eliezer, Kulu Svirulu. What do all of them agree to? To ein sheni ose shlishi bechulin. That chulin at its maximum can only become tame in the second degree of separation. This is how we pass in halacha lemaisa. That chulin cannot become whatever. We don't need uh, we don't need truma. But I'm just saying that in that era that would have been ladina that we don't uh, that we don't have chulin becoming more tame than a sheni. Let's go through four of the five, and we're going to stop at the fifth one because it because um, I'm not prepared for it. So it says the Gemara a third of the way down. Lamed Amid Aleph, Rav Meir. Where do we see that Rav Meir holds that Ain Sheni Osa Shlishi Bechulin? So it's, but I just want to be very clear: all the Gemaras that we're about to read, each one of them is an hour of work. I just want to be super clear: we're learning this Dafyomi style. I'm going to be as clear as I can. I, I, I just want to be. There's so much more in all of these Gemaras. It's always like that, but it's especially true here. As we'll soon see. Rav Meir, how do we know that he holds that ain sheni osa shlishi bechulin, that chulin will never become more tame than a sheni? Because it's not. Kol haton bias mayim midivrei sofrim, mitame es ha kodesh uposa les ha truma mutter bechulin ubemaiser. That anything that needs to go into water, anything that needs to be last kele, midivrei sofrim. So that means that that kli has a level of tuma to it. It's metame esa kodesh. It ruins the, the fourth level, right? That's kodesh. Uposa lesa truma. And it ruins the third level. Umotr bechulen uve maiser dibir mer. And then, and by, by chulen, he says it's mutter. And that's talking about a sheni the tuma. So therefore, we see that there's no shlishi. That's Rav Meir. On that very same Mishnah, the Chachamim argue only about Meiser. Osrin be Meiser, whereas Rav Meir says it was Mutter be Meiser. That's a side machlokas. 
but not for now. So that's the first of the five um, uh, five Tanoim where we got to see that he holds Ein Sheni Osa Shlishi Bechule. Reb Yossi Hade Amran, we already had this in the Kal Vachomer of Mechusar Kippurim that we learned in the Brisa, a third of the way down on Chav Tesem and Beis in the name of Reb Yossi. The Im Ise, that had it been that the Truma, that the Tuma by Chulen would have been to a Shlishi, then what would that have done to Truma and to Kodesh? If Chulen was Tame up to a third uh, degree of, re- of, of, of separation, then that would have bumped up Truma to a fourth. And it would have bumped up Kodesh to a fifth, says the Gemara. If it were to have been true that Chulin could become Tame up to a third, up to Shlishim, then Lese le Revi betruma vichamishi be Kodesh. And that's definitely not what happened. That's not what Rabbi Yossi said. Therefore, we reverse engineer, and it must therefore be the case that according to Rabbi Yossi, that Ain, uh, that Ain Sheni Ose Shlishi Chulin. Let's talk about Rabbi Yoshua, um, just about halfway down. Shitas Rabbi Yoshua, this is the third source of Ein, Os, of, uh, Ein Sheni Ose Shlishi Bechulen, that when it comes to Chulen, we cannot create a third level of Tumad. It's not. The Mishnah writes, not with the Shita we first need. We'll get to Rabbi Yoshua in a moment. Rabbi Eliezer Omer. And when I read this, you'll see that this is a great example of a Mishnah that needs more time. Ha'ochel, Ochel Rishon, Rishon. Sheni, Sheni. And Shlishi, Shlishi. Super cryptic, even though it sounds simple, but it's pretty cryptic. Rabbi Eliezer is of the opinion that a person who eats a Rishon, so then it will then be matame other things as a Rishon. Sheni, Sheni, and Shlishi, Shlishi. Rabbi Yeshua argues. Rabbi Yeshua Omer, and this is the Shita that we need to learn from. He says, Ha'ochel, Ochel, Rishon, Ve'ochel, Sheni, Sheni. If you eat a Rishon or a Sheni, then, and then it then has the capacity, that food, to become a Sheni. Shlishi, Sheni, Bekodesh. If you eat a shlishi, then it can create a sheni in kodesh. It's a very sensitive food. The ein sheni betruma, and bechulin shenasu al taras truma. This is the part that we need with chulin that was treated like truma, al taras truma in. Only when it's treated like truma, only when the chulin is treated like truma, that when we when it has a shlishi. However, ein al taras a kodesh lo. But when truma, when chulin is treated like itself and not treated like truma, so then it's just at a maximum capacity of two levels of tuma. Alma, kasavar ein shnia osa shlishi bechulin, and therefore we've seen our third shita in the tanoim that ein shnia osa shlishi bechulin. Let's learn our last one for the night. Rebbe Lazar, we're ten lines from the bottom of the page. The Tanya, the Brisa writes. I think I see a change here in the Girsa. The Tanan. This is actually a Mishnah and not a Brisa. Rebbe Lazar Omer, Shloshtan Shavin. There are three cases that are equal. Harishon Shebe Kodesh, Veshebe Chulen, Veshebe Truma. The, the cases of Kodesh, Chulen, and Truma. Metame Shnaim Uposel Echad. The capacity of Tuma when it comes to these things is Metame Shnaim Uposel Echad, Bekodesh. And Metame, because, because Kodesh is the most sensitive. So if Kodesh is the most sensitive and there's already a Rishon, it's Metame Shnaim. It can carry Tuma to Shani and Shlishi. And then the last one is not Tuma, but a Psul, which is the fourth. That's B'Kodesh. And Metame Echad Uposel Echad B'Truma. And that means that by Truma, if there's already a Rishon, then your Metame Echad, Rishon can make a, a Shani Tame. And Uposel Echad, and it makes the third one, uh, what we already know for Truma to be true, which is that the sensitivity of Truma is that it can become even a Shlishi. And uposel echad bechulin. This, these words are, are our key words here. This is Shita Rebbe Lazar. Uposel echad bechulin means that if there's chulin and it's a rishon and it becomes exposed to tuma again, it can bump to a sheni, but nothing more. These are four out of five of the shitas that we uh, have seen today where ein sheni osa shlishi bechulin, then chulin cannot become more tummy than a sheni. We'll pick up Emir Hashem on Shabbos with a blot and a half, uh, starting at Rabbi Eliezer, five lines from the bottom on Lamed Abad Aleph. We will be having our shir in Yerz Hashem uh, after the early 2.30, Mincha 2.50, just because I have a, a Shalashudas that I have to be at on Shabbos, for Hashem, for a siyum. Uh, not for me, for my brothers making a siyum. So we'll be stopping right here, wishing you all a beautiful night, and see you on Shabbos. Thank you.